Haskell, come on in, I'll show you around. We're in the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, mm -hmm. and it is one of the laboratories of the U.S. Army's Medical Research and Materiel Command. Would it be correct to say that someone sleep deprived, even in the movie business, might have some cognitive disability? Well, yes. I mean, anybody's sleep deprived. And there's, there are really sort of two things. Total sleep deprivation, which, you know, tends to get you rather quickly. But there's also sleep restriction, where you don't get adequate sleep for days, weeks, or months. And this does wear down your performance. Uh, this is a uh, commercial uh, uh, flight um, back in the early 90s. It was uh, flying cargo into Guantanamo Bay. And it was just uh, three, pilot, co-pilot, and uh, engineer. But they had been awake for 24 plus hours. The approach to Guantanamo, you can uh, either come in the easy way over the water and line up with the runway, or you can come in at an angle, make a hard banking right, line up with the runway, because you have to avoid Cuban airspace. And they decided to take the more difficult approach. Captain, again, where's the strobe? Co-pilot, do you think you're going to make this? Captain. Yeah, uh, if I can catch the strobe light. Co-pilot, 500, you're in good shape. Engineer, watch the, keep your airspeed up. Co-pilot, 140. Now he's warning him that his airspeed is too low to sustain flight. Sound of stall warning. Somebody, don't, stall warning. Captain, I got it. Co-pilot, stall warning. Engineer, stall warning. I got it, back off. Max power, there it goes, there it goes. Oh no, crash. So what? caused the captain to be fixed on the strobe light. He had not slept in 24 hours. Oh my God. It's a happy ending because all of the plane crashed, they all survived. And the co-pilot now is quite a spokesman for aviation safety and, uh, and adequate sleep.